Hi everyone. everyone! Welcome to Lifehouse Community Church Online. Yeah, great to have you with us. Uh, my name's Mark, um, this is Catherine, uh, we lead Lifehouse Community Church. Yeah, last week we set a bit of a challenge about baking because of the mm. bake-off season and um, we've just, yeah, it's been great seeing what you've been doing actually, but for a bit of fun we thought we'd show some of those photos today. And um, yeah, Jackie's been doing some great baking um, and then Jill's also sent us in some cheese scones. And Thea wanted us to show her chocolate brownies that we talked about last week. Brilliant. Thanks for sending those in. Um, yeah. It's a shame we didn't get the physical. Uh, I know. Maybe delivery services, yeah. Yeah. Cheese scones, <laughs> my favourite. Just putting it out there. Um, it's great. Um, if you uh, want to connect with us, uh, if you're watching for the first time, it's really great to have you with us. Um, you can connect by going to our website, www.lifehousecommunitychurch.com uk forward slash contact and say hello ask us questions um, ask us about different things it's, it's a place to get involved as well mm. uh, we don't just do this on Sundays uh, or whenever you're watching this in fact yeah. um, but we we have a prayer meeting every Thursday on zoom uh, you'd be more than welcome to join and connect uh, if you don't have the link we send it out on a weekly update um, ask us and we can get that to you or uh, we have what we call communities, midweek groups that, that meet throughout the week. Uh, they do fun things, they connect, all COVID secure and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, if you want to know more about those, get in touch with us on the website. And uh, we're also on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all of that as well. Yeah, and because we are all digital at the moment and we're not able to meet as much face to face we just really felt like a lot of people are feeling a bit disconnected. So mm. our challenge this morning not isn't baking like it was last <laughs> week, but it is pick up your phone. And what we'd like you to do right now or throughout this after this morning is pick up your phone and ring or text. Just send somebody um, a word of encouragement or just reconnect with somebody. You go, oh gosh, because we have not been at church face to face. I've not seen you for a while. And um, just reconnect with somebody today is our challenge and just start that afresh. Yeah, so why don't you do that now? Grab your phone, yeah. um, send a message. Hi, I really appreciate this about you or thank you for doing that, whatever it might be. Let's let's grab our phones, WhatsApp, text. If you want to ring, then do that. But let's do that right now. You could pause this if you wanted yeah. or you can do it while I'm wittering on uh, and saying all that. But um, let's send those messages. Um, let's get as many messages as we can uh, going and, and encouragement that that would bring. Uh, we're going to ask you next week if you've done it, so <laughs> do do it. Um, we're going to go into a time of worship. Um, I'm going to pray and um, Rich is then going to lead us into a time of worship. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We do thank you for the wonders of technology. Thank you for this service that we can connect still even in these times. But uh, Lord, we are longing to be together as well. And um, I want to pray, Lord, that uh, we would support one another, that we would bless one another, that we would send messages, that we would do things that would bring encouragement. Lord, we want to pray, uh, Lord, would you build up your church? Would you strengthen us? Would you speak to each one of us this morning? May you come by your Holy Spirit and pour out your love and care that each one of us needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. Uh, over to you, Rich. Uh, thanks for leading us in worship.
Thanks, Rich. Uh, that was great. Uh, amen to that. Um, we have a good God. Um, he is the same as yesterday, today and forever. Um, thanks for leading us in a time of worship. We really do appreciate it. Um, it's great that we can sing and praise his name. Yeah. And now in our series at the moment, we're looking at reflecting God's glory. And today mm. we're looking at what, looking at God's holiness. And we have the pleasure of having Mark's parents actually yeah. speaking today, Andrew and Elaine. And just, yeah, because of this technology, we we're able to have them speak to us. And they are up in Tees Valley Community Church. Um, it's a church that is linked to us because we're all part of the same network, Salt and Light. And yeah, isn't it great that they can speak to us from their home um, into our living rooms today? Yeah, it's great. Um, get ready because um, we're going to do this in two parts. Um, my dad is going to do the first part. Um, and then Elaine's going to speak my mum a bit later on um, in the service. Um, get ready because uh, he goes in deep quick. Um, he kicks us straight off looking at uh, the biblical view of what holiness is about. So uh, over to you, Andrew. When I started to think about holiness, I decided to look it up in my dictionary. Under holiness, it had the word sanctity. So I looked that up and under sanctity... It had holiness of life, saintliness, sacredness, and inviolability. Well, thank you, the Concise Oxford Dictionary. So, to me, the dictionary seemed to be of limited use, and I decided it instead to see what the Bible said. Exodus 15.11 says this, who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Moses and Miriam, after the escape from Egypt, are describing in their song something of what God is like. His character in comparison to gods of other nations. For the Israelites of the Old Testament, being holy did not mean that they were to be a specially religious nation. The word holy from the Hebrew means different or distinctive. 
Something or someone is holy when they get set apart for a distinct purpose in relation to God and then are kept separate for that purpose. For Israel, it meant being different by reflecting their very different God compared to the gods of the other nations. God is separate from and exalted or raised above all his creation. He is separate from all evil and sin. Holiness is the primary characteristic of God and is behind how he directs his love, power and will. God created human beings with the intention of having a relationship with them and holiness is about living in relationship with God. Holiness is about treating other people differently and in a better way than the, than the norm. For Israel, the Old Testament law was a way of doing this and made Israel completely different from the other nations. Leviticus chapter 20 verses 24 and 26 says this. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from the nations. You are to be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. God gave Israel the sacrificial system described in Leviticus and this emphasised the holiness of God and the sinfulness of humanity. And if we look at the commissioning of Isaiah as God's messenger in Isaiah chapter 6, this emphasises God's holiness. And for Isaiah, it brought the reality of his sin suddenly and sharply into focus, as happens when you view something through a pair of binoculars. Earlier, I talked about God being separate from his creation because he is separate from sin and so no one can approach God except on the grounds of atonement. This is the act by which God restores a relationship of harmony and unity between himself and humanity by putting the situation right and making reparation or compensation for wrong. This meant paying the penalty for sin and appeasing God's wrath or anger against sin. In the sacrificial system of Leviticus, the blood of an animal was accepted by God as a substitute for the death that the sinner deserved. For us, the shedding of blood and death of Jesus on the cross paid the penalty for our sin that we should have paid for all time. And his death also destroyed the power of sin to separate us from God. We as Christians are called to be holy, as the Apostle Peter says in his first letter, chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy because I am holy. This doesn't mean that we have to strive to make ourselves perfect, so don't give up when you fall short of perfection. But it does mean that we should behave differently from those who are not Christians, but not in a weird way. We should treat each other and those we meet in the same way that God has treated us and blessed us. So as Christians, what is our mission? Peter, in his first letter, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5 and 9 to 12, says this. Welcome to the living stone, the source of life. The workman took one look and threw it out. God set it in the place of honour. 
present yourselves as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary vibrant with life, in which you'll serve as holy priests, offering Christ-approved lives up to God. You are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. We are to be a holy priesthood and a holy nation and a people belonging to God. By being these things, we will draw attention to what God is like and draw others to God so that, so that their relationship with him can be restored. This doesn't require us to be especially religious people or to achieve some higher status through great spiritual exertion or supremely moral living. We will do this as we live out who we are in practical ways in our daily life. We can live out our identity in God, in Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit and as adopted children of God. Elaine is going to help us discover more about how we can be a holy priesthood and a holy nation. Thank you, Andrew, for those interesting thoughts. And we look forward to hearing from the second part with Elaine shortly. But first of all, we've got a family song and story. Um, so get up, get the kids together and let's get to dancing around the living room. We've got a song for you today it's called All Through History. And we're going to try and remember all the words and all the actions. Okay? And Daddy's going to play the keyboard and I'm going to do the action. And I can't go to do anything they want. <laughs> okay, let's start. Okay, let's start. There you go. <laughs> The most enormous boat It kept the birds and animals afloat The Lord was good The Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him Moses led his people through the sea Taking them away from slavery The Lord was good Strong and Moses lived his life for him. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That all through history you were faithful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me. It's David. David knew the life that he won. The humble shepherd boy became a king. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and David lived his life in. Daniel. Daniel was inside the lion's den. God brought him to safety once again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Daniel lived his life for him. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That all through history you were faithful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me This time Jesus died to take away our sin Jesus died to take away our sin So we could get to know our God again The Lord is good, the Lord is strong And we will live our lives for Him Oh, thank you, oh, thank you that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you 
are just the same way. Thank you, thank you, oh thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. When it comes to me, when it comes to me. Yeah, well done everybody. This week we are looking at reflecting God's holiness. And that's a really tricky one because that means doing the right thing all of the time, being patient, being kind, being good, listening all of the time and doing the right thing even though we might be tired or fed up or bored that means doing the right thing all of the time and you might remember a very good person in the bible called jesus he appears quite a lot in the bible and he reflects god's holiness all of the time and gives us some really good examples and one really good example he gives is of zacchaeus and zacchaeus was a tax collector and not everybody liked him very much and they all thought he was a bit mean so nobody wanted to be friends with him but as part of a large crowd he wanted to see Jesus the most and everyone said no no Jesus don't be friends with him he's not a very nice person but actually Jesus showed his holiness and reflected God's holiness by being friends with somebody that not everybody was or not everybody liked very much but Jesus wanted to be friends with him and Jesus showed God's holiness by being kind and by being patient to Zacchaeus. And that really is quite tricky to do. So I'm going to read you a story today about a dragon. And this little dragon finds it quite hard to do the right thing. And you'll see more in a moment. And it's called When a Dragon Comes to Stay. Here he is, look, on the front. Can you see him? You see if the where you see which examples are the dragon being holy and which ones are the dragon not. When a dragon comes to stay, here he is, arising at their house, knocking on their front door. Does she go roar and shout my way? Does she snatch and keep the toys away from other girls and boys? Why no, dragons don't do that. A dragon knows she must play fair and wait her turn and always share. She knows the rules of all the games and never argues or complains. When she's the last to have a go, that's how just how dragons are, you know. When playing games of hide and seek, a dragon knows he must not peek. He counts out loud to 21, then calls, ready, here I come. She never finds you right away. That's just the way that dragons play. At dinner, does a dragon slurp or throw her food or moan or burp? Does she spill food on the floor or bang her spoon or bellow? Murr. Why no, dragons don't do that. A dragon smiles and sips her tea and eats her sandwich carefully. She says the lettuce tastes just right and never ever gets a fright at anything that's on her plate. Yes, dragons really are that great. And when she's finished all her food, a dragon is polite, not rude. She takes her empty plate and cup and sometimes even washes up. A dragon is helpful as can be. That's just the way the dragons are, you see. Then when the day is nearly done and we are tired from having fun, the little dragons wail and moan or flap their wings and groan. Why no, dragons don't do that. She skips upstairs to have a bath Big bubbles make this dragon laugh. She scrubs her dragon scales and wings. All dragons love to do these things. She puts some toothpaste on her brush. 
Then she cleans her teeth. She doesn't rush. She folds her wings up, nice and neat, and pulls some bed socks on her feet. She doesn't make a fuss or frown. All dragons are like this puppy down. Then when it's time to go to bed, does this small dragon shake her head? Does this tired darling cry or pout or throw her favourite toys about? Don't do that. But if she's overtired or a little sad, that's when a dragon might turn bad. Then you must wrap her in a hug and make her cosy, safe and snug. And sing a gentle dragon song. A dragon won't stay sad for very long. So pull cosy, come to her sleep all through the night. She will not whine, she won't be roaring. All dragons love a bedtime story. She'll listen very carefully. How lovely can a dragon be? And if she sn and if her snores, and if they make the windows shake, and if they rumble through the wall, well, she is a dragon after all. For this week, can you be like that dragon? Can you be polite? Can you tidy up your things? Can you give somebody a hug if they're feeling sad? Can you tidy up your bedroom when mummy and daddy ask you to tidy up your bedroom? Can you share your toys? Can you write a card for somebody? Can you do something the first time when you're asked? Can you smile and be happy through the whole day? There's a challenge for you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Houghtons, for that. We enjoyed dancing and doing the actions in our living room this end. I hope all of you have. And Claire, that's just great challenges. What of those challenges are you all going to pick up this week? Yeah, I wonder if you do more than one, hey? Mm. How about that? <laughs> um, we're now going to have the, the second part in our talk, uh, looking at reflecting God's holiness. Uh, my mum, Elaine, um, is going to pick that up. And in this series, we, we've always, every week, we've looked at what the biblical context is. But um, we also want to apply it to ourselves. Uh, we don't just want to gain head knowledge, but we believe that God wants to disciple us and change us, that we do reflect who God is. And so this bit looks at how do we respond? What is it that we can do in that? Um, so over to you, Elaine. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Hi everyone, it's so good to connect with you, although this is digital rather than with you in person. Um, we're looking forward to the day when we visit Mark and Catherine again and family and we're able to worship with you in person. But until then, it is good just to touch base with you. Mark has asked us to look at the topic of holiness and reflecting holiness in the world that we live in today. Andrew's already outlined what a biblical concept of holiness is. That sense that holiness is a bit about being separate and set apart to live as our God wants us to live. Andrew quoted that scripture from 1 Peter, which is one of my favourite scriptures. And that commission for us to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Peter is reiterating what was the original tension for the children of Israel from God, that they were called to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. And us as God's people have that same calling on our lives. And I love that verse because it sums up the fact that yes, we are saved and we have the um, pleasure of knowing God and walking with God and we know where we're going we know our eternal destiny is to go to be with Jesus but there's more in that verse we're called to be priests and a priest was somebody who was a mediator between God and the people we know that the priests went on behalf of the people and offered sacrifice for their sins they went before God for the people. 
But then the priest would come and they would teach the children of Israel the things that God had revealed to them. And they would pronounce blessing on the children of Israel, peace and love from Father God, from God. And that same role is for us today. We call to be priests, one who come and bring people to God. We pray and we intercede. But then we're also called to take God and his character and his love and who he is to all the people around us, to the nations even. And so that commission is on us right from the minute that we come to know who Jesus is. So I'm called to be a priest, represent people to God and represent God to people. And how I represent God to people is by living in a holy way, in a godly way, and living according to the word of God. So we're called to be a holy nation, but is this easy? Often when I think about holiness, I get that sinking feeling. I always grew up with the verse saying, instead of be holy as I am holy, it was be perfect as I am perfect. And so I, I lived often with the thought, but I can't be perfect. I can't meet that standard. Sometimes it feels like being holy means you can never have any fun. You know that expression, all the naughty people get to do all the exciting things. Holiness sometimes can be, for some people, about judging people and that feeling of superiority. Well, I'm better than them. That's what the Pharisees and scribes were like, that sense of super superiority. Reflecting Jesus' holiness can feel like a heavy weight around our shoulders. And so when I was thinking and preparing this, the expression that kept coming to me was this expression about cultivating holiness. And when you cultivate something and you cultivate a plant, a new plant in our life, in your garden, actually the first thing you do is you prepare the ground of where it's going to be planted. And then you carefully take that plant and you put it into the good soil that you've prepared and you nurture it, and you protect it, and you feed it. You don't just let it go. You feed it from the elements, the things that will come around it, that will stop that plant from growing. And that's very similar to holiness, to wanting to be like Jesus. We need to cultivate holiness in our lives. So I've just got a few points that might help you to begin to think, how do I cultivate holiness? And the first thing I'm saying is that cultivate holiness by knowing who you are. One of the things that we see clearly from Jesus is he knew who he was as the son of God. We had that pronouncement on him when his baptism, when, G when Father God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then we hear it again at the transfiguration. This is my son. And so there is that security. Holiness comes from being who you are. Holiness is given to you, is given to me. Ephesians 4:24 says, and to put on the new self and put on the new self-createdness to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. The true righteousness is holiness. It's the same expression. And it's that sense, the minute I come to Jesus, I am holy. I am set apart from him. He doesn't look at me anymore and see sin. He doesn't look at me and see all the wrong things I do. He looks at me with love and with tenderness. And he sees Jesus. So let that truth go in you today. Because I think the enemy sometimes plagues us with this thought, but I can't be holy. I can't live the life that I'm meant to live. Let that truth go in that says, you are holy. You belong, you're a son, you're a daughter. Another way of cultivating holiness is out of relationship. 
Holiness isn't about following a set of rules. Holiness is about being in a relationship with God, with one that loves you, and out of that relationship, holiness begins to grow. But we have to cultivate that relationship, and one of the ways is by spending time with him, by talking, by praying. Jesus in the Gospels, we hear the expression how many times he went aside from the disciples, from the busyness of the day, and he spent time with his father. He said, whatever I see the father doing, that's what I do. How do we know how to be holy? By committing time to spending time with him. Sometimes spending time with God can become a chore. We can get busy and we can feel like, do you know what, I need to slot God in somewhere. But if we are to grow in holiness, if we are to imitate Christ, we have to know who he is. And one of the things that I like about the expression about holiness, that actually that expression, holiness isn't always taught, it's caught. You know, like a married couple that have been together for 60 odd years and you can look at them and they're so alike because they've spent time with each other, it rubs off on them and you can't tell one from another, they finish each other's sentences. That's what holiness is about. It's about spending time with God in an intimate way. Whatever look that looks like for you, go for a walk, get a cup of coffee, and just spend time in his presence, knowing who he is and becoming more like him. So cultivating it, holiness is then as we spend time with God, it's about cultivating a life of worship and honour and putting God at first in our lives. When we worship him in spirit and in truth, again that starts to rub on us and we begin to live as God wants us to live. One of the things is about um, we're not trying to please people, but we're trying to please God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, We speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not to trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. When I'm in that relationship with Father God, intimate relationship with him, I want to please him. I want to bring him pleasure. I don't have to be holy. I get to be holy and I choose to be holy to bring him pleasure. Another way of looking at cultivating holiness in our lives is I don't want to cause Father God to be sad or to grieve God. In Ephesians 4 verse 30 it says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And that verse sits in um, a whole passage about how to live and putting things off like bitterness and malice and anger. My actions can please Father God or they can f make Father God feel sad. And I don't want to do that. So I choose to seek to know who he is, to follow him in love and not to cause him sadness or grief. One of the practical ways that I do that is to begin the day by giving Holy Spirit permission to speak into my heart and to tell me if I'm doing things that are not according to his will for me. So one of the things that sometimes I pray, Holy Spirit, will you come today? And will you whisper to me when actually I'm going to do something that would cause sadness to Father God because I don't want to grieve him? At the end of the day, I'll run through the day before I go to sleep. And again, I pray that prayer. Holy Spirit, is there anything today that I've done that brings sadness to Father God? Because I love him as my dad, as my father. I want to bring him pleasure 
and I don't want to bring him sadness. And that means I keep very short accounts with God. I quickly say I'm sorry. I quickly choose then to say, okay, Holy Spirit, so how do you want me to act? Because I'm not doing this by myself. I don't have to be holy. I can become holy because I trust God. The Holy Spirit will never condemn us. He always convicts us. And so if you are hearing lots of times, but you're rubbish, you can't do this, that's not conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's condemnation. Don't live in condemnation. When we set our hearts not to grieve God, then the Holy Spirit will come and convict us, yes. But conviction is for our benefit, is to make us feel better. Another thing to cultivate holiness is to live in community. 1 Peter says we're a holy nation. We're not meant to live in isolation in trying to be holiness. And one thing I found helpful for me in developing holiness is by living accountable to people, by trusting people that God has placed into my life, people who love God, who I trust, have God's heart and my best interest at heart. So if you know there are particular areas in your life that you're struggling with, don't hide it away. Don't keep things in the darkness. That's where the enemy comes and he will seek to hold that over us. And that's when we live in trying, we're striving for holiness. We're trying to change, but actually we're not living in freedom. So talk to people, get them to pray for you, be accountable. If you know there's a particular sin, don't hide away, bring it into the light. 1 John talks about bringing things into the light rather than in darkness. You will change if you bring things into the light. And then holiness is not just about personal holiness. So far, that's what we've talked about, a personal holiness, a personal relationship with Father God, Jesus and Holy Spirit that is bringing pleasure to God and changing us in the process. But then holiness is to become a lifestyle. It's not just a one-off action. It's not about conquering sin. I'm going to conquer that anger problem that I have. I'm going to conquer that envy problem that I have. I'm going to put those aside. It actually is a way of living. Holiness is about cultivating a lifestyle of living in the way of God. Chris Wright, who is an Old Testament theologian, uses this expression. Holiness is a task. We're called to be holy. And that means it's about the whole of our lives. It infiltrates into everything in our lives. For the children of his Israel, holiness was practical, it was social, and it was down-to-earth living. If you want to look that up a little bit more, look at Leviticus chapter 19. It includes things like respecting the family and the community, being generous with our finances and our money, social consequences, looking after the vulnerable and the marginalised, loving our neighbours as we love ourselves, walking in justice and integrity. Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, he brings a new way of living, a radical way of living. In Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16, Jesus talks about being salt and light. Jesus calls us to the same radical and distinctive living that penetrates and transforms the darkness that we live in. So when we're called to be holy, we're called to make a difference. And so how do we live a lifestyle of holiness? Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. 
This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect and pleasing will. And that word body is not a physical body. That word body is the whole of your lives. So God says, be holy as I am holy. And holiness is given to you. And holiness is given to you out of a relationship with him as a son and a daughter. You can stand and walk in holiness. But then holiness is meant to be outlived. Cultivate a lifestyle of holiness, of walking before God in the way that where we partner with God to establish his kingdom and make his name known throughout the, all the earth. Let me finish with this verse. And finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And that's from Philippians 4 verse 8. Holiness is about being in a relationship with Jesus and allowing him to transform our lives, not to conform, but to transform, to bring him pleasure and for us to walk in freedom. Yeah, thank you, Elaine. Just lots to think about there. And yeah, about let's just really think about this week about letting God transform our lives. And yeah, next up is prayer time now. And Chris is just going to really lead us into a time of prayer over holiness. And let's just use what we've heard today and mm. just pray about what it is that God wants to speak to us about. Today, we are thinking about holiness. We know that God is holy. This means he is perfect in goodness and righteousness. Several verses in the Bible exhort us to worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness, tremble before him all the earth. So God's holiness is splendid, it's awesome, it's majestic. He is completely perfect in goodness and righteousness, something most of us probably find difficult to totally comprehend. I recall Barry using this illustration in a sermon of a completely pure white piece of paper which represented God's holiness. Even the tiniest dot or smudge would mar that perfection, but in God there is no such dot or smudge. His holiness is perfect. So how are we to re reflect God's holiness? Well, I think there are two points. We need to aim for perfection in goodness and righteousness. We know we'll never achieve it in this life, but that shouldn't stop us aiming for it. But holiness can also mean dedicated or consecrated to God. We have been dedicated and consecrated to God. We have been made holy through Jesus' redeeming acts. He paid a high price for us, and so we belong to him. Let's not forget that. So to the prayer points. First of all, take some time to worship God in the splendour of his holiness. Reflect on his perfection in goodness and righteousness. Secondly, thank him for redeeming you, which means buying you back. Thank him that you belong to him and he has made you holy. And finally, ask him to help you to better reflect his holiness, to become more perfect in goodness and righteousness. Bye.
thank you for connecting with us at Lifehouse Community Church Online. It's been great having you connect with us. Yeah, it's been a great morning. So rich and deep. Let's let God transform us uh, throughout our week, not just on, mm-hmm. on a Sunday. Um, if you want to connect with us, if you want to know more, you know how to do it. Go to our website, um, contact us via that. We'd love to hear what God's doing yeah. in your life as well. But that's the end of the service and we'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.